Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 15 of The Independent Agent. I'm Jordan, and... I'm Justin. Justin. Justin's smiling at me. That well, normally you introduce me, but then you kind of pause, so then it was my turn to introduce okay, myself. Okay, you can introduce yourself. I'm Justin. Okay, perfect. Everyone knows now. Okay, cocktail time. So, I'm going to make a cocktail, which I'm sure you've had. I'm slightly modifying it, but... But big, why are you modifying it? Okay, so we're going to do a white Russian... Which you've had a white Russian, yes? Yes. Okay. So I'm modifying it because it calls for heavy cream, and I just can't drink a drink with heavy cream. So I'm doing some low fat milk instead. Okay. Okay. It's healthier that way. Is that because your I diet? Just, no, no, not because of my diet. Nothing in this drink is good for my diet. But I, I, there's no but. There's no but. There's just, all right. Um, Fill her up. You brought something to stir other than your finger, correct? I did. I did. Uh, we had people from the health department uh, call in and, and question the last time where <laughs> what happened with the cherries and your finger and hand washing. <laughs> What's it? Lavas los manos? Lavas los manos. All right. Okay, so, you, whoa, you're pouring a lot of whatever that is. Dude, it's one of those mini ones. It's a oh, it's a pre, it, oh, it's a premix drink. No, it's not a premix. It's oh, a it's Kahlua. A, a small Kahlua. It's a small okay. Kahlua. All right. I was gonna buy the big jar of Kahlua, but then I was like, when are we gonna drink Kahlua again? Got right. it. Got it. Got. I went it. up and stocked up though. I just got a ton of different booze because I'm sick of having to keep going every time we do this. So now we'll have. We actually have a booze cabinet at the office now. Lovely. All right. So you just filled up the second one. Now what's coming in next? So. Then we're going to do vodka. So you're supposed to do equal parts Kahlua, vodka, and then heavy cream. I'll do equal parts Kahlua and vodka. I'll probably go mellow on the milk. So you're already going light on heavy cream by low fat, and then you're reducing it further. Aren't you kind of changing the entire drink right now? Well, why, why does that matter? I can do what I want. I'm uh, dripping all over the, uh, the, the notes, notes, by the way. So... Oh, this doesn't have the. Oh, oh yeah, a you got to old school like, manually <laughs> open the milk, uh, milk container. Come on. Hey, but this is good in vitamin nope. D, so good. S still terrible. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. This is planning at its finest. You can do it, Jordan. I'm gonna rip the top <laughs> off this. This thing. is like an IQ test oh, right come now. On. <laughs> <laughs> For those not watching our YouTube channel, might as well be this using is... my teeth. <laughs> This is amazing stuff. Dear Moses. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> you you good there? No, I'm not right, Hopefully good. you don't spill on the floor. Okay, so he's he's filling her up with moderate, low-fat cream. All right. Almost showtime. Stirring with a sanitized spoon. I don't know if it's, it was in the drawer, so I mean. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Yours? Here's your ultra. All right, I'm stocked up. I'm ready. What did you say? Stocked up. Not what I heard come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. White Russian time. Well, modified white Russian. Modified. It doesn't even look white. <laughs> Don't believe that there. <laughs> yeah, not for me. Really? Yeah, no. I thought you'd like it. It's like a... Like a Chocolate milkshake. No. That's like melted. Definitely not. Well, well, I guess more for somebody else in the office. Yeah. Um, um, do you remember what movie this is from? The Dude, buddy. Mm hmm. The Dude. The Big Lebowski. All uh, right. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. And since. He, you know what other movie I was oh, talking yes. about the other day? Mm. Um, is uh, because that Martika song came on, um, that 80s song. Uh, you remember the movie Toys yes, with Robin Williams? I do. I haven't seen that and movie. And LL Cool J. You, you haven't seen that movie? I have seen that movie. Okay. But I was like four. Remember when you used to make me watch all your creepy movies? <laughs> like, <laughs> It wasn't creepy. I have pictures in my head of like, like I'm sure what I remember is nothing about what the movie really is. So yeah, but I remember that song from the movie. Got it. You know, got Toy it. Soldiers. That's what that song's called. Yes. Um, all right, moving on. Questions. All yeah. right, here we go. Question number one. We have an agent in our office that is known for being extremely demanding with his account manager, right down to telling the account manager what to wear to client meetings. His most recent account manager moved on to another position within the company, and he insisted on being part of the interviews for her replacement. 
One of the candidates interviewed was by far the most qualified for the job, but when he was asked for his opinion, he responded that he did not feel she was attractive enough to be working with his clients. As the HR manager, I take serious issue with this statement for several reasons, but I'm not getting the support on this from the other managers involved. How do I address it? Go for it. (laughs) Uh, Well, let's start with, I mean, and I know agencies do this, but our producers, including my brother and I, do not have account managers. They are not ours. We don't have individual ones that work on our ex- uh, solely our book, etc. We've split the accounts up, um, and there's other reasons for that. But this is part of the reason. I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, we handle Mike's or Brian's or Jordan's or Justin's or whoever's book right exclusively, because then this is a we already have like the hierarchy and the roles just inherent in the industry. I don't feel like we should have to like further, you know reinforce them with, with, with saying that this account manager is this producers. Well, and, and even just a statement of, and I'll, I'll let you finish, but my account manager implies ownership of right. that individual. That's what, that's my entire point. Yeah. I, I just, um, goodness. Uh, there's a lot in this part. The, the attractiveness piece. Uh, I mean, has anyone gone back to this dude and wondered how attractive he is? I assume the producer is a dude because I can't imagine a woman being this shallow to, to have this conversation, but maybe a woman would be this shallow. I, it just feels like the producer. Do we know if the producer is a dude? I, I don't know, but now you're just being judgy. I'm, I'm so judgy. I'm being, but isn't it like, can't you judge when, when you are that role and that sex? Can't you judge your own? I think so. I think so. Okay. Um, I mean, it's just inappropriate. And if your job is the HR manager, if you're not getting the support, figure it out. I mean, your job as HR manager is to handle this stuff, is it not? Well, Justin, you would know you're our HR manager. <laughs> well, let's say this. If you're the HR manager and you don't have the authority to step in and, and discipline the decision, then, then you're not. You're just a figurehead. And then you have a whole different conversation to have. Um, and even down to the attractiveness, right? Our father used to uh, have Orthodox Jewish clients Mm -hmm. who, um, you know, were very, very, very conservative, right? So even... They're not conservative Jewish, they were Orthodox Jewish. Okay, yes, I know. (laughs) Conservative with their clothing. (laughs) Wow. Do we need to go down that that rabbit hole? I just thought it was a fun little added. They're not Reformed Jews. They're not conservative Jews. They were Orthodox. They were Orthodox, but they had very conservative values, and what the women were allowed to wear was very conservative. And so if you walked in with somebody who this person clearly identifies as wanting to be very, very attractive and wearing uh, clothing that was inappropriate to them, that would actually harm the relationship. And so I, I think that the problem is that anytime we're talking about dress as anything other than professional, then we've got a problem because people should be valuing your agency for the services rendered and for the relationship that you bring and not uh, looking at your female staff in that way. And I, 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 again, I know this happens. I've seen it happen. Um, Either you're the HR manager or you're not, and you're going to put your foot down and say, this ends here. Don't don't HR managers have like the right to like write people up and cite things and, and, and disciplinary action. Isn't that within their purview? Yes. And I would think a, a well trained HR, uh, manager, if you will, we're slamming the person writing the question. (laughs) I know. Sorry. But, but (laughs) if I'm the HR manager and I don't have the authority to do this out of principle, out of the training that I've undergone, I would be offering my resignation if I didn't have the authority here. Because what good are you in your job if you can't? Now, to this individual, I I don't know what to say other than, you know, I I hope uh, if someone's listening in that department, somebody else knocks some sense into them. Just inappropriate. Um, I have stronger words from that I won't use. 
but it's it's tough enough in a, a male dominated producer industry without adding to it the insensitivity of a female's uh, appearance to the 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 male population that may or may not take interest in her and thereby still want to have a relationship with your agency. I mean, Justin, how would you feel if I was always commenting on how you dressed? You are always commenting on how I dress. <laughs> True or false? But not your looks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay playful banter aside uh, i think it's fairly obvious hopefully this hr um, manager is hearing us and again we don't mean to come at you i know you're asking an honest question but that's my honest answer you stand your ground you write that person up and if that's a problem for the owners then you need to resign and find another organization well, well don't you think what if someone i mean we're not large enough to have a standalone HR manager at our agency. Mm. Yes, Justin, I know you are the <laughs> HR manager. But assuming we had someone and they came to us and said there was a problem, and then they we didn't do anything, and then they offered their resignation because of it, don't you think we would be like, holy crap, maybe we should actually take this seriously? Or maybe they're just relying on their EPL insurance. It's not a bad practice. <laughs> I'm kidding. Kind of. Uh, Ready that, for question two? Yeah. All right. We ripped through that one, man. That's probably the fastest question we've ever gotten through. It was fairly binary. It was. It was. Two, I am currently managing an apartment within a large agency. I was recently reviewing compensation from my team and noticed a large wage disparity between one male and one female employee. They have equal levels of experience and are essentially doing the same job. The male employee is being paid significantly more. I've been given a little flexibility on adjusting the compensation for the female employee, but she is still being paid quite a bit less. I'm extremely uncomfortable signing off on these, but I don't feel I have a choice. Any thoughts on this? Lots, and I'm about to take an angle that this individual is probably not thinking about. I'm wondering if it's the same angle I'm going to take. Well, you'll find out. Is it a triangle? It is not a triangle. It's an okay. octagon. I don't even know where I'm <laughs> going with that. <laughs> I just had to throw something else out. Okay, so I want to set aside this question for a second and talk about industry practices as a whole. Not what's best practices, but what I've seen with, with an or, another organization I used to belong to and many others. In order to get a raise, you had to depart the company and leave to go somewhere else. And so you would take... The two people, let's say they're the same sex, they, I don't know why I'm raising my hands because most people are listening to audio, but they're the same sex. Even if they're watching on video, why are you raising your hands? <laughs> I was trying to say they, they're the same sex. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're still raising your hands. Okay, I'll keep them on the ground. They're the same. <laughs> you still raised one hand. <laughs> I don't know. I'm doing my best here. They're the same sex. And one person left somewhere else and then got a $7,000 raise when they went somewhere else. Now, another opportunity back at the company they left opens up. Now that person's offered four grand to come back to their old company when they couldn't have gotten a $2,000 raise before. Now that person's making ten or $11,000 more than their counterpart that was doing the same job as them. Now, two things are at issue here. One, if I'm that person that didn't get that raise and didn't take the opportunity to jump elsewhere and come back or didn't articulate, hey, this is what I need to make, that is on them to a certain extent. That disparity happened because somebody else took the risk, went elsewhere, and played the game better than you. Now, the organization should, in theory, pay people equally. So I see that happen all the time. So you have to separate, is that the scenario that's playing out, whether it was somebody who jumped out, or was it this person is actually a male. It's a good old boys club, and he wants to make sure this guy makes more, or she wants to make sure this guy w makes more, which wouldn't make sense in a good old boys club, but uh, you have to make sure it's not the first situation I mentioned. If if they've both been there the same time, they're both contributing the same, and the only difference is truly the sex, then absolutely it is unacceptable. Um, and your flexibility in adjusting the compensation for that, that employee, 
I would say you need to again address that with management and say, "Hey, I've noticed this disparity. Are you know, is there a reason? Am I missing something here?" And then, if you're not, I would share your opinion. Now, at the same time, employment is a free marketplace. That person in most states, in most states, that person who's making less. If you haven't heard from them that they're upset that they're making less and they've never asked to make more, et cetera, there's again that burden on that other individual. Again, in theory, all things being equal, the compensation should be equal. But I think there's some variables here that you have to take into consideration before coming to management and giving your input. And and then once you do, you'll you'll have that discussion. And if you have an organization which says all things are equal and we still want to pay that male more than females, well, then again, you have your answer. That's the type of organization you work for. And do you want to be part of an organization that devalues one sex over the other? Jordan? I have similar thoughts. Um, I don't want to even go so far as you said, playing the game differently or better. Sometimes it's just economics. It's, It's simply supply and demand. If you're in an arena, I mean, think about the workplace environment right now. You had a third of the workforce retire over the past few years. You got another few hundred thousand leaving in the next couple. Your your experience that's in this industry is rapidly diminishing. Okay. So let's say you guys lose an account manager. I'm going to use easy numbers. Let's say you have five account managers at an agency and everyone makes 60,000, two guys, two gals, right? All of a sudden, you lose, you know, and you lose the fifth one. And it's this guy coming over. Well, if you can't find anyone to fill that, but you need someone to do that, and you have to pay them 10 grand more, that's just supply and demand. That's just economics, right? And that is that might be the reality of what's happening. I also don't buy the idea that all things being equal, because all things are never equal. And I know that we have really good people um, on all sides of the aisles trying to, to create equality for men and women. And I'm not denying that women are marginalized in this industry and many others with equality for pay. However, unless you've done the digging of maybe their man, maybe one account manager's book is 800,000 in revenue and maybe the other one's 400,000, right? Or potentially they've been doing it the identical amount of time, but one is handling far more sophisticated accounts and has far better coverage knowledge and understanding because they've done more to grow in the industry. That there are different components that are just going to go into it that you need to evaluate all the angles, which is what you were saying. But it's never this binary, um, you know, all things being equal, it should be paid as such, you know? I think we covered them. Dude, this is our shortest podcast ever. How many minutes are we at? 18. Are we getting better or are we getting worse? Are the questions getting easier? A lot of dead space right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you outro them with the song, Justin? I'll pass on the song, but again... Uh, these oh, are- you know what I wanted to say? Okay. Oh, okay, go ahead. I wanted to say, first, keep writing in uh, because we need the questions. Justin at Total CSR, Jordan at Total CSR for cocktails. Uh, but we are starting to grow pretty rapidly as a podcast, which is awesome. We need more reviews, though. So please, please, please go into whether you're listening in Spotify or any other, you know, Apple Podcasts. A ton of our people listen to Apple Podcasts. Review, comment. We need them. It helps people to find us. Um, so please, 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 if you like what we're doing, if you don't like what we're doing, maybe you're not listening anymore. But uh, um, give us good reviews or bad reviews, whatever. It doesn't matter. But cocktails, recipes, drinks options. Justin. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.